Hello, everybody. My name is Stacy, and I'm the Director of Career Services here at DelVal. I want to welcome you all to Ignite 2020. Tonight, we're going to be focusing on business, specifically marketing, communications, and sales. Um, I did want to let you know that we have two sponsors for our business Ignite. One would be College Hunks Hauling Jump, and the other is the Delaware Valley University Alumni Association. Now, if you are unable to stay for the round table um, and you would like to connect to our professionals, the good news is that they've all indicated their willingness to connect with you. So you could always email CSPD at delval.edu and we'll help you out with their, their contact information. Um, so those are all of the housekeeping items. What I would like to do now is allow our panelists to introduce themselves by telling that telling you their name, their title, and just really briefly, high overview of what they do so you can learn a little more about them. So we will start with Becca. And then just as a reminder for our panelists, if when you're not talking, you can mute yourself, that'll help with any background noise. So take it away, Becca. All right, awesome. Well, thank you again so much for having me. I'm really excited about today. Uh, so basically now, uh, my name is Becca. Um, I am a copywriter for PCS Retirement in the financial services industry. Uh, and basically as a copywriter, I am writing basically any promotional content that needs to be written. So that could be anywhere from a social media post, that could be a marketing campaign, that could be uh, press releases, um, kind of just anything you would consider written content for marketing purposes. That's kind of what, um, what I do. So about it. Thank you. So next on my screen, we have Mel. So would you go next? Hey, everyone. Thank you again, Stacey, um, for hosting an amazing event and inviting me today. My name is Melissa Roseman, um, and I'm a physician account executive with Quest Diagnostics. So I work hand in hand um, with physicians of all different specialties, ranging from primary care to oncology. And pretty much what I do is work from the servicing aspect all the way to the sales aspect. So whether it's converting new accounts over from our competitors um, to continuing to service accounts that are on board with Quest Diagnostics, upselling for different testing that we offer for patients, um, whether it's our services, we have a portal and EHR that can help clients with results, you name it, I pretty much help um, facilitate those conversations with, with the office and helping the patient receive a result. Great, thank you. And Gino, how about you? Yeah, so my name is Gino Finan. I am a graduate of 2000. So um, I've been in the consumer products industry for 20 years. So that's basically anything you would buy at a store is considered a consumer product. So right now I work for a company called Premier Nutrition. So what we're really selling is protein shakes, protein powders, power bar. Um, our premier protein is our biggest drink, which is number one seller at Costco. So if you're a Costco member, you would see pallets and pallets of our protein shakes that are sold there. Um, what I do, I manage a sales team across the U.S. that uh, handles national accounts like Target, Kroger, um, Kroger out of Cincinnati, who has some, uh, you know, mostly West um, and, and Southern divisions. Albertsons, who owns Acme. So uh, they have 2,200 stores across the US um, and have always been on the sales side. So every time you enter a store, there is thinking behind what's the price of a product, where it's placed on the shelf, where it's placed on the floor, if it's on display, um, it, how you shop, how you walk the store, everything like that. So there's so much analytics behind everything that seems so normal for what everybody does every day. But my industry studies that and then we try to capitalize it and get you to pick our item versus a competitive item or get you to try our product versus, you know, just walking right past it in the store. So. Great. Thank you. I remember all of that from my days in my undergrad in business. So right. it's taken me back. All right. So we're going to start with the formal questions and we'll try to get through uh, as many of them as we can. And we're going to start, Becca, we'll have you start us off again. If you could just share how your first job impacted your career and where you are today. Yeah, so my first job was at, right out of college. I was at a call center. I was a um, 
uh, customer service representative at Zoetis, which was the animal health division of Pfizer. Um, so it wasn't the job that I wanted, but it was in the industry that I thought I wanted. So I figured first I got a college, I'm going to take it and see what happens. Um, but with my, and it, it was great with, for my major, my major was animal science, uh, livestock science and management at Del Val. Uh, and it was great for that part, but my minor, um, was media and communication. And I was really into writing and journalism and marketing, you know, I was getting into that kind of realm. Uh, and that's what I found. I continuously was just craving more writing and more marketing. I, I was wanting to be more creative than what my, my job was. Uh, so, you know, I found myself freelancing, uh, freelance writing. I was writing, you know, fiction on the side in between phone calls. I was writing my blog in the middle of phone call, you know, like I was trying to still get, you know, I was just wanting to write basically. So that's what, um, that's basically how it, that impacted my career. I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and I had a lot of steps to get to where I am now and still more, way more ahead, uh, of course. But uh, I guess that's how my first job impacted. I just kind of learned more about what I wanted to do the most. And it's really, as, as the person in career services, it's really interesting and fun to see. I knew Becca when she was a student. so. Those of you out there watching who are students, it's great we get to observe the growth and just to see, I remember Becca when you were in the office and just first getting that position. So congratulations for all that growth. Yes. Um, Thank yeah. you so much. And of course, Mel, why don't you tell us a little bit about that first job you had and then how that got you to where you are? Sure, so um, pretty much fresh out of college and entering my master's, um, I started working um, for Clinique, the cosmetics, um, as a part-timer, because I continued my degree at Del Valle, my master's, I didn't want to overload myself. I did the master's in like a year and a half, so I wanted to complete that, make sure that I could handle a part-time job at the same time while going full-time for master's. Wanted to get on more hours, um, and I actually was promoted there to become a manager of Chanel. So I remember back when I was in college, Dr. Shudlaskis had talked to me about pharmaceutical sales and getting in that industry, and it kind of stuck in my brain, but I didn't have any business to business experience, and that's what they kind of really look for. Um, my background was zoo science, um, and then I have, you know, obviously with the MBA, but I didn't have the business to business sales experience that I think they were really looking for, like copier sales, paychecks, things like that, but Chanel gave it to me um, because it was so you know, the price point was up there and we're converting clients from using another like over the counter or whatever to Chanel and working for that, you know, that sale brought me into pharma. Um, and it's actually because of my Chanel experience that I entered the pharmaceutical industry. When I had applied for the job, I was the only one with no, no pharmaceutical experience at all. Manager told me, and I quote him, he goes, what sold me was your Chanel background. So that's what I did. That's terrific. It's great to see, you know, that first job. Sometimes you don't know how that'll play out and how it'll impact you, but it really sounds like it was valuable. So, and I see Gino, I see you nodding. So why don't you share your story? Yeah, my, my career started out a little bumpy, um, but I'm a huge advocate on that. That first job is so critical and it certainly was in my career. So I graduated in May of 2000. Uh, my girlfriend, wife now, uh, we took a trip for three weeks in Europe. She had a job as soon as she came back and I didn't. So I got to looking for jobs at night. I was working, my family has a small business. So I was working there just trying to, you know, make some money and, and keep afloat as I looked at night and, and tried monster.com at that point, which is kind of a, a dated reference, I think at this point, <laughs> but that's what it was at that time. So. I basically got to a point, it was all the way in August and I'd gone through several interviews and nothing really worked out. So graduated in May, it's mid August. And I say, I can't work at the family business anymore. I've just got to focus on finding a job. And things didn't really happen right away. I was committed, I was all in. Uh, it was September 19th around, let's say September 20th. I had $17 in my bank account. I, you know, was in my parents' house with four brothers or two brothers and two sisters. 
I wanted to be out of there as fast as possible. So I, uh, I was interviewing and I was, I interviewed with a telephone company and they offered me a job. I knew somebody that worked there. They got me the interview and I went through, I had two interviews and it went well. Uh, my parents said, take it, take it. You know, I, again, I had $17 in my bank account, completely broke, had graduated in May, still had nothing. And I went out to dinner with my wife and she said, does it feel right? I said, no, but I have no money. I need a job. I need, you know, I need to put my, uh, my, my basically, you know, Matt or my bachelor's to work. And she said, if it's not right, don't take it. So I ended up the day before I was supposed to start calling up the company and saying, I'm sorry, it's just not right for me. And they said, why, why, why? And I said, it's just not the right fit. So I was back to where I started again, broke, living with my parents and kept, you know, kept at it. So interviewed, interviewed, interviewed. I was interviewing with Kimberly Clark, so the paper company that owns Scott and other brands. Um, and my parents were out to dinner and they ran into one of their friends who worked at Campbell Soup. And she said, well, I know somebody that works at Kimberly Clark. And she's like, in fact, we're actually hiring a Campbell's. Tell him to send me his resume. And three days later, I'm on a plane to Boston interviewing with uh, like 40 plus people, you know, in some hotel up there, just room to room to room and ended up getting that job. And that job for me started a career. And because I, I, I trusted my gut and really I, I give a lot of credit to my wife because she's the one that talked to me, you know, said, follow your gut. But I trusted my gut and said this wasn't right, even though it was kind of what people were pushing me to. I waited until it was the right opportunity. Then it came and what the right opportunity did was build my career to, you know, 20 years later, I'm still selling consumer products. Great, thank you. There's so many good follow-up questions we could ask about <laughs> that, but I'll leave that to the students for the, the round table. All right. Um, so some of you have talked about this next question. You've alluded to it a little bit. Um, so you can decide which way you wanna go, but I'm curious if you could each answer how your career has differed or stayed the same from what you imagined it would be when you first started out. And just to change it up a little bit, I'm gonna have Mel kick us off. Then we'll go to Becca and then Gito. Sure, so me being zoo science, I thought I wanted to be a zoo vet. That was what I anticipated going to DelVal for. Um, my junior year, I realized I didn't necessarily need to be a vet to work with animals. So I started thinking what I want to do in the zoo field, um, per se. And I found out, I was like, I love education. I love mentoring and helping, and like, especially in the conservation aspect. So I found a passion in conservation education at a zoo. And I wound up taking that and running with it. Um, graduating, actually, right before graduation, I was applying to this really big opportunity at the Salisbury Zoo in Maryland. Um, I don't live anywhere near Maryland, so I'll be packing up my whole life um, and moving out to Maryland, and I didn't get the job. But I literally found out the day that I was graduating as an undergrad in 08. So it was kind of a, a wake-up call for me, because I had to say, okay, if I'm not going to be able to get into the zoo field, maybe I will, maybe I won't. What am I going to do otherwise, right? Um, so that's when I started to pursue a master's and, and kind of continue my education because I always have a passion for, you know, for the soul, for talking to people and mentoring and things like that. But how am I going to mirror this two together? Um, so Dr. Shidlass has kind of showed me the way to, to break into pharma and understand that what I love about Del Val like so much is that you don't have to made like major in something and do that as a career. Um, Delval is such a comprehensive school that you can learn so much from your undergrad and transition it to, you know, grad school or a career. And I realized as I transitioned into pharmaceutical sales, specialty pharmacy, medical device, and now laboratory sales, I've realized that my animal science background still correlates um, because the human anatomy is so similar to animal anatomy, believe it or not. Um, and I find the science background is just ever evolving and it makes sense. So I didn't necessarily, you know, completely leave, but I definitely transitioned to something different than I initially thought. And I was open to that. Um, I think the most important thing is you have to be open to something different, whatever calls you, if you feel that vibe. Great. 
How about you, Becca? Yes, so my career is definitely different from how I, would ima how I had imagined it. Uh, I was just one of those people my whole life who every week what I wanted to be something different. Um, and Delval definitely opened up a lot of different opportunities for me that I learned about different industries, different jobs. Um, so when I, but when I was graduating, I was thinking it would be really cool if I could mix my major in animal science with my minor with media communication uh, and kind of do something like science journalism or you know something similar to that and kind of combine the two that way. Um, it didn't end up that way, um, clearly, but uh, again, being open-minded, I was always willing to um, get a job maybe in the industry that I thought could, I could want, but maybe not the job or the job that I wanted, maybe just not in the industry or the title that I wanted, but not in the industry. So it's kind of a back and forth, just learning. Like that's really all the last six years I graduated in 2014. The last six years have been an immense period of growth and learning and being open-minded and just doing what I had to do, following what I love. So um, it kind of morphed into, you know, I, I didn't feel like I needed to be in the science field, but I knew that writing was always the constant for me. That's what I knew that I had to follow over anything. So that's kind of how, how I got to be copyrighted today. Thank you. And Gino, would you mind answering next? Yeah. So for me, I thought I would follow kind of Becca's role. I thought I'd be in marketing. I loved writing. It was always just something that came naturally to me. Um, and from the, I was a, I was a business administration major, but I just loved every aspect of marketing. So when I came out of school, it was marketing, 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 applying for those jobs. And I really wasn't getting many hits or getting the interviews and, and because that long process that I just laid out before it, you know, you start to see more availability on the sales side. And once I got into sales and, you know, learned more about marketing being in, you know, a company like Campbell soup or something like that, where you can learn the different aspects, sales was a more natural fit and could utilize more of my skills. So I, I came out thinking marketing, but I've been on the sales side ever since. Yeah, I think most of us can say it's just not fully, it's never that like clear path, right? right. Of it's exactly. exactly what you think when you first start out. Exactly. So this next question, Gino, if you would uh, kick us off with this one, um, if you could just share an example of a professional obstacle, whether in your current role at Premier Nutrition or somewhere else or any time in your career, but a professional ob obstacle you faced and how you overcame it or are overcoming it. Yeah, um, I would say the the biggest, this goes back to early in my career, I was with Campbell's. Um, so I spent eight years there early in my career and I was a sales rep. So that was my, my first job, which means I was calling on stores and trying to sell in a case of, you know, Campbell's pork and beans to the shop right in Cherry Hill. You know, so that's that's kind of what I was doing. And I did that for four years. So there was 250 sales reps there was eight positions to go to. So it was a serious funnel. And I, you know, I had learned so much and they put a lot into training, but I was about to leave. I said, enough with this. You know, I, there's, there's nowhere to go. There's no upward mobility. And I said, I can go be a sales rep. It was Ken salad dressing was the, the company. They made me an offer. And I talked to a mentor before that. And he said, are you nuts? Like, you work for one of the best companies that's investing in you. Go back to school, get your master's, have them pay for it and keep working hard. And it was just one of those like where I was barraged by somebody that, that had a lot of industry experience. I was talking to somebody that he thought was about to make a career mistake. And turns out, what did I do? I applied. I, I ended up going to Newman University for my master's. Um, got my master's there. Campbell's paid 100% of it. And it was during that time, midway through me getting my master's is when I was promoted into one of those eight positions. So that helped kind of shrink the pool of, of candidates to go upward. And that was one of those moments where I was about to make a big mistake. And because I have mentored uh, mentors in my life that I can lean on and be honest with, uh, they helped me kind of avoid making a big mistake like that. 
And just to follow up what's so great is you all being willing to connect with all of the students on the call and even after. Um, it's great because then they can have mentors in each of you. So that's phenomenal. Yeah. Now, I know we are getting close to the end of time and I want to make sure students have the opportunity to chat with you. But um, I would love for Mel and Becca, if you could answer that question as well, um, the professional obstacle and how you overcame it. And Becca, if you could go next. Sure. So I've had many professional obstacles uh, in, in these six years. I can go more in detail when we do the, the table, the talk at the tables. But uh, I want to talk about specifically this last round of job applications and interviews that I just went through. The, the job I'm at now, I just started in September. Um, so this last round of interviewing and, and applying for jobs was a huge hurdle. Um, it was basically where I, I, I realized that I really, I truly believed in myself and my skills, and I knew that this copywriter role was something that I could attain. Um, but I learned after literally like 100 to two, probably closer to 200 applications, there was something I was doing wrong. I had multiple interviews and people just kept rejecting me. Um, so it was really about recognizing how competitive the market was and recognizing how I was marketing myself. I mean, I, I was looking for a role in marketing and I was like, I, I can't even market for myself. Like, what am I doing? What different, what, what's something different that I have to do to set myself apart? So that's when I became more competitive than I ever have. Um, and I came up with different strategies to make myself stand out um, down to the naming convention of my resume, um, how I edited my resume, how I um, presented myself and um, really um, prepared a presentation for interviews, just little things that really made me stand out that I feel like and uh, finally got the job. So um, that was just a huge, um, but a huge grow, you know, growth opportunity that I had. And, you know, I'd love to share more with you guys if you're interested later too. Well, congrats on the new job. <laughs> Mel, how about you, if you would share? Sure. Um, so I look back at this now, I probably never say this verbiage, I say today, um, but in the past four years, I've been blessed to have been laid off twice. I know that sounds kind of crazy to say the word blessed for losing an opportunity, um, but in, in, in that hindsight, I see it made me a better person. And, and the first time it was, I mean, we were, I was at the pit of like, I thought, you know, the great part of my career, I was just, I think I just turned 30. I was um, getting ready to move up in the company. We were our first time ever. I've been on the team for almost five years and we were about ready to win an awards trip. I think in pharmaceutical sales, you know, award trips are pretty awesome. Um, and we were about ready to win. We, we were celebrating as a team, like literally the week prior. And then all of a sudden snap your fingers and my team and I, along with, I think about a thousand reps across the country out of 4,000 um, all got cut. It didn't matter your top performer. We were top 10% of the company or if it was bottom 30%, it didn't matter. So that kind of shook me up and I said, what am I doing wrong or what do I need to do better or kind of just grow in the process. Um, you know, I definitely shed a lot of tears in that, but I learned um, and, and became stronger in it. But actually two years ago, I was at a job that I, did not like to be honest. Um, I love what I did, but my manager and the team just, it was not a great company, unfortunately. Um, and again, I was blessed. I knew this one was coming, so I kind of prepared myself a little bit more. I knew there was going to be massive layoffs. So I prepared myself um, and I wound up actually getting the job at Quest just maybe like two months after being laid off. Um, but I was so like hyped on on um, applying for job time. I think I applied about 150 places within about probably a two month time frame. So I was getting applications and getting, you know, turned down or, or offered some type of interview. And I was neck and neck with receiving another offer for another company that I was ultimately actually applied for a couple of years back in, in a managerial role that I really wanted at the time. And they chose somebody else. This position came back up again, um, being a rep and managing a really large territory promotion for me, making more money than I'm making now. I love you quest, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I, I turned it down. They actually offered it to me. I was already at Quest for about three weeks and they offered it to me. Um, and just because the timing was kind of there, I turned it down. And, and I thought to myself, why? 
you know, this is more money, but money wasn't going to make me happy. It was the position itself. And I've learned that, like, as kind of what Gino said, you have to search um, for something, you know, that would make you happy. And whether it was going for that master's degree or maybe transition to another job. Um, and I realized staying at Quest at the time, investing my career in this company was, was ultimately the better decision for me. Wonderful. Those are great answers. I know we're past time. I could ask so much more, but I do want to give the students a chance to follow up. I really appreciate, though, you sharing and just letting everybody know, you know, careers aren't a straight path and, and things can change and everything that you've learned. Thank you.